Um, good evening and welcome to Borough Hall. My name is Richard Barak. I'm Land Use Director for Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. I will be conducting tonight's he hearing for the Borough President. I'm joined by my colleague Anthony Drummond. Um, there are two items on the agenda this evening. Please note that this hearing is being recorded to comply with the public law for transparency. It will be available for viewing on the Borough President's website, Brooklyn underscore USA.org or on the One Brooklyn channel on YouTube. Web viewers may submit timely comments to askeric at brooklynbp.nyc.gov for Borough President Adams' consideration. Uh, Anthony, if you could call the uh, first item and we will begin. All right, calendar item number one, number 150076ZMK. This application submitted by Lulu, Lula Enterprises LLC pursuant to sections 197C and 201 of the city charter for an amendment of the zoning map by establishing within an existing R5 district a C1 commercial overlay along Fort Hamilton Parkway on both corners of East 4th Street to allow it to file an application with the Department of Cultural Affairs, I'm sorry, Consumer Affairs, to operate a sidewalk cafe. Community Board 7 approved this application by a vote of 36 in favor, zero opposed, and zero abstained. Would the representative for this application, Corey Barrick, please state your name for the record and present the application. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Corey Birak, and I'm representing the Law Office of Vincent L. Petrero, PLLC, and with me are Georgia and Kevin Reed, the operator of Hamilton's Restaurant. We represent Lula, Lula, I'm sorry, Lula M Enterprises, LLC, the tenant of a portion of the first floor space and operator of Hamilton's Restaurant, which is at 2826 Fort Hamilton Parkway. It's on the southeast corner of East 4th Street and Fort Hamilton Parkway. The owner of 2826 Fort Hamilton Parkway, Saxes Realty, LLC, has authorized the Law Office of Vincent L. Petraro, PLLC, to file the subject application. And the application, you know, when we have the, the maps and the, some of the overlays and the uh, depictions of the street are on, right on these charts here, to my right, the application is to map a C24 overlay district in an existing R5 zoning district in the Windsor Terrace area of the Special Ocean Parkway District. The mapping would affect the southeast and southwest corners of Fort Hamilton Parkway and East 4th Street. The southwest corner is another commercial establishment, Jaya Yoga East. Both commercial establishments are, not, are legal non-conforming uses. The Hamilton site has been a commercial use since 1926, but both are in the residential zoning districts. The Hamilton site, 2826, is improved with a three-story, 7,350-square-foot building containing eight residential units, the restaurant, a sanitation storage use, a contractor's storage, and an artist studio. The building is overbuilt so that no new floor area will result from the rezoning. The Jaya Yoga site contains a three-story, 4,515-square-foot building with four residential units as well as the yoga studio. No new floor area will result at this property as well. The purpose of the rezoning is to facilitate the application for a sidewalk cafe with the Department of Consumer Affairs. Such applications cannot be made in a residential zoning district despite the fact that the, resident, res, uh, the restaurant is located there legally. The community board, as you mentioned before, approved the application and further 37 individuals sent in emails stating their support and 13 spoke at the Land Use Committee's public hearing. And also the restaurant has at least 12 years left on its lease. And Jaya supports the application. Now, if you have any questions, we'll be glad to uh, take them. Okay, thank you. Uh, we understand that some neighbors have apprehension about how the sidewalk cafe tables would be set up and that there's concern about the sidewalk clearance on nights when residential garbage would be put out for collection. Given that there are several months before the rezoning gets considered by the city council, how might Hamilton's work with neighboring residents to develop a seating plan that reflects their concerns and opinions? Right. And I'd like to ask the operators of the establishment, Georgia and Kevin, to come up so they can answer these questions directly. Thank you. And if you could again state your name for the record when you start to speak. 
Thank you. Georgia Reed. And Kevin Reed. So the in terms of the garbage and the tables, we do have the attendance and names and address of everyone that attended the community board meeting and we are planning on doing a re an outreach when we do, hopefully when we do get the rezoning as part of our application, we'll do a mock-up of the patio for that application where we'll take photos to send into the DCA. We'll invite the members of the community to that meeting so that they can see what an eight foot clearance looks and feels like. Um, it was hard, I think, for them to um, imagine what that was like. We're going to, we could also open up the restaurant on slower hours to have a meeting with the community about any other issues that they may have. Um, we're going to have literature at the restaurant about when the when this application is going through um, and, and inform everybody in the neighborhood and the community about the process. And as far as the garbage... You can pull the mic out, yeah, just for the recording purposes. Thank you. So we've, we've, the landlord previously, before, while we had the patio, was putting out, this is with the entrance to the residential units. He was putting the garbage out sort of right in front of the patio and it was getting in the way of the tables um, and it was restricting the sidewalk. So we've spoken to him and he's going to put it on the other side. You can sort of see um, there's like four feet between the artist studio entrance and the residential on the left side coming out of the building, he's agreed to put the garbage on that side so it wouldn't be in front of the restaurant at all, or the patio at all. Okay, thank you. Um, it is the borough president's understanding that um, should this application get approved, uh, Hamilton's did put forth consideration that it, in the time ahead it could possibly limit its sidewalk cafe operation hours, uh, reducing it a little bit during the week and on weekends. So, if that were to become the case at some point, um, how does that get memorialized, um, monitored, and forced if we ever were to have that be the situation? First, I just would like to say that we are a family restaurant, a neighborhood restaurant. We don't serve hard liquor. We serve beer and wine. We're a restaurant, not a bar. And the patio is um, to, to just extend that experience. We respect we live in the community we respect everyone that lives in the community we we would like to have the patio open at the hours that the city mandates which are midnight and 1 a.m. we will the 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 patio should it get should we get the um, sidewalk cafe is up for re renewal every two years and it goes in front of the community board so before that, but certainly at that process, we would be willing, and I am, uh, we are willing to cut the hour shorter should it be disruptive or disrespectful consistently to anybody in the community. Okay, thank you. And then uh, we understand that uh, the discussion at the community board's public hearing regarding Hamilton's donating unusable outdoor tables to the nearby neighborhood sitting area. I'd just like to know the status of that. Um, yes, we, we actually did donate, uh, I'm sorry, Kevin Reed, uh, we actually did donate those tables to a local church. Um, we reached out to the community garden, but they did not get back to us, and um, the church expressed interest, and so we donated them to the church instead. And they have them, they're gone, they've been taken away from the premises. Thank you. And finally, it's the borough president's policy to maximize job opportunities for Brooklynites with local businesses. Uh, will the operation of the sidewalk cafe result in new positions? And if so, how does Hamilton's go about uh, filling positions to promote locally based hiring? We do expect um, some seasonal positions to open as a result of the, if we do, um, if we are able to open the sidewalk cafe. Um, both um, servers as well as possibly uh, kitchen staff in order to, um, you know, cook the food that the patrons are, are ordering. Um, so it is our standing uh, policy, not a written policy, but it's a preference of ours uh, to hire locally because it's better for us, uh, better for the community. Um, it's certainly better for business as well um, to hire locally because um, people have a shorter commute, they can get there quickly, um, they tend to be more loyal, 
to the place if they're local. Um, there's, there are many intangible reasons to have local people as employees, so we definitely always try to hire locally when we can. Okay, uh, no further questions. Um, so we have one speaker in the item uh, representing uh, Councilmember Brad Lander. We have Vicki Sell. Hi, I'm Vicki Sell from the Office of Councilmember Brad Lander, and I'd like to read his statement. Um, it's testimony, testimony in support of Hamilton's application for a patio rezoning. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony in support of the application submitted by Lulu Enterprises LLC, the corporate designation for Hamilton's, a restaurant operating at 2826 Fort Hamilton Parkway in Windsor Terrace, Brooklyn, for an amendment of the zoning map to accommodate a sidewalk cafe. I would like to express my enthusiastic support for this rezoning change which would allow a pre-existing legal, non-conforming restaurant to become compliant and enable an application to the Department of Consumer Affairs to permit a sidewalk cafe. This change is an opportunity, er, excuse me, this change is an important step to support the ongoing op operation of Hamilton's in Windsor Terrace. Hamilton's is a relatively new but respected small local business. The owners of Hamilton's, Georgia and Kevin Reed, have taken good care to engage the local community at each step in the zoning process. Strong local businesses strengthen our neighborhoods and make great Brooklyn a great place to live. The Reeds are just this type of active, community-minded business owners that I am happy to support. In turn, I encourage the Borough President's Office and City Planning Department to support the changes proposed to the zoning map, which would allow Hamiltons to grow their business and continue operating within Windsor Terrace into the future. Thank you for your time and the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any additional speakers that would like to speak? Okay. Uh, with no additional speakers, I'll ask Anthony to close the item. Okay, calendar item number one is closed. And we'll now move to Calendar item number two, item number 140288ZMK. Thank you. Um, this application submitted by uh, Fort Hamilton LLC pursuant to sections 197C and 201 of the city charter for the amendment of the zoning map from an R5 district to an R6 district to facilitate a six-story medical office building with ground floor retail. Community Board 12 approved this application by a vote of 33 in favor, no opposed, no abstain. With a representative for this application, uh, dear, it's gonna be your. Uh, okay, so Dan Egger, please uh, state your name for the record and present the application. Good evening, my name is Dan Eggers of the firm Greenberg Trarg, representing My name is Dan Eggers of the firm Greenberg Trarg, representing Fort Hamilton LLC, the owner of the property located at 5402 Fort Hamilton Parkway in Borough Park and Community Board 12. This is a rezoning application. Let's see if I cannot break it this time. Our property is on the southwest corner of Fort Hamilton Parkway and 54th Street. It's in an R5 district within a C-13 commercial overlay. All we're proposing is to extend the existing R-6 district that goes up to 53rd Street, 100 feet west of Fort Hamilton Parkway and touching our property line to encompass our property and one other property. That's the property across the street from us between 53rd and 54th Streets, which is occupied by the Monastery of the Precious Blood. The C-13 commercial overlay will remain in place. The rezoning will not change the permitted uses. Our 
property has historically been used for non-conforming uses, an automotive service station. The rezoning would facilitate the development on our property of a new six-story community facility medical building with ground floor retail and approximately 50,000 square feet of zoning floor area, or 5.54 FAR. Our property has a lot area of about 11,000 square feet. The building would be 76 feet tall, which is comparable in height to the monastery across the street from us, which has a tower that reaches a height of 79 feet. The retail space would be approximately 5,600 square feet. The building generates a parking requirement under zoning of 150 spaces, which would be contained in a subcellar level of three automo automated parking levels. The building would fully comply with the R6 district regulations. The building would serve primarily as a woman's health care facility. It would include a birthing center which affords women with low risk pregnancies the opportunity to have natural childbirth outside a traditional hospital setting. This would be an outpatient facility. It would serve as the new location of the Brooklyn Birthing Center currently located on Ocean Parkway in Sheepshead Bay and run by Fran Schwartz who has 25 years of experience in managing OBGYN and midwifery practices in the New York metro area. We believe that this type of consolidated healthcare facility represents the future of healthcare as envisioned by the Affordable Care Act. One floor would be an ambulatory service center. Another floor would have the birthing center. The remainder of the floors we envision would be occupied by physicians who would service patients. Unfortunately, our client could not be here tonight, but I'm joined by my colleague, Deirdre Carson, and the architect, Arpad Baxa, is also here. He can speak more specifically to the details of the building. As you noted, Community Board 12's Land Use Committee and the full board gave us a unanimous favorable recommendation, and we respectfully request your support as well. Thank you, and we welcome any questions. Uh, thank you. Sure. You want to come up to the mic and introduce yourself? Yeah. Yeah, the clarific my name is Deirdre Carson. I'm um, Dan Eggers' colleague from Greenberg Traurig, and the clarification is Dan gave you a gross floor area number, not a zoning floor area number. The zoning floor area in the building is um, 50,669, and the effective resulting floor area ratio is 4.54 instead of 5.45, I think. Some okay, that's it. Thank you so much. So I want to note that this application is consistent with the Borough President's Faith-Based Property Initiative. The rezoning we see would result in additional development rights that would benefit the adjacent monastery, resulting in approximately 24,000 square feet of additional residential air rights. Um, so just want to ask that the requested zoning, since it permits residential development and permits a building to be several, several stories taller than the images we're looking at, what mechanisms might guarantee that this building would be developed as a medical building consistent with the height of the presentation drawings? Well, we've not been asked to do so yet. We're, one, one possibility is that the City Planning Commission could ask us to enter into a restrictive declaration, which would require development of the site in conformance with the plans that would be attached to the declaration and recorded against our property. And if City Planning were not interested in pursuing that, what else might be available? Well, that's, that's something that we, could, that we could volunteer to enter into. Okay, we'll be very interested in learning more about that possibility. Also, um, Fort Hamilton Parkway is often congested and the borough president is concerned that medical operations could be prone to double parking. And so between the medical vans and other vehicles picking up and dropping off people. So, so what consideration has a developer given in order to prevent congestion from resulting from such vehicles that otherwise might be impeding traffic? Prior to certification, our transportation consultants worked very closely with the Department of Transportation 
to identify measures that would ensure that our development would not adversely affect traffic on surrounding streets. First, three additional seconds will be added at the traffic light at the, cor at the intersection of 54th and Fort Hamilton Parkway for traffic along 54th Street. The second measure is that on the west side of Fort Hamilton Parkway, for about 50 feet nearest the entrance to our facility, the parking regulations will be changed from no parking 8.30 to 10 a.m. Monday to no standing 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday except for ambulance and authorized vehicles. The third measure is along 54th Street on 20 feet to either side of the entrance to our below grade parking facility. These will be changed from no standing any, uh, it, we will have no standing any time signage in that, in that area. These measures um, are known as daylighting. They improve visibility, turn around radii, and will also provide places for cars to drop off and pick up so as not to impede traffic. And what would make it certain that these signs would be in place when the building is ready to be open? We've um, executed a commitment letter that obligates us to enter into and record a restrictive declaration sort of, as we discussed before, that obligates us to implement these measures upon approval of the application. So if that letter could be shared with this office, be greatly appreciated. We will be glad to provide it. Okay. Um, it's also the borough president's policy to promote the use of sustainable and renewable energy resources. In fact, the borough president recently convened a renewable and sustainable energy task force focused on advancing a sustainable future in Brooklyn. What consideration has Fort Hamilton LLC possibly in cooperation with, for example, Department of Environmental Protection, Mayor's Office of Sustainability, NYSERDA, NIPA, taken towards incorporating solar panels and or a green or a blue roof in this building? This is a critical issue and it's important to our client and our pod box, our architect, will share some of the measures that we're envisioning. Good evening. Um, I'm Arpad Baksha, the architect for the project. Um, the clients are, since the whole project revolves around wellness, they want this building to be a, a sustainable building, a clean, good building. So we have, um, right now, um, we have Stephen Winter's office, and we're working with them to have a, a minimal silver lead building. Mm -hmm. To that end, um, we're also con considering and proposing geothermal wells. The uh, reason we're proposing that is on, I've done that on several other projects my off office has, and in turn, geothermal is one of the most, uh, most efficient, clean, and cost-effective um, way to condition a space. It, in fact, it will reduce the energy cost of a building by 44%. Um, and that involves, in this case, we're guessing right now, because we haven't done uh, borings yet, but roughly four or five wells. The site is large enough to accommodate, com accommodate that. Um, in addition, we're, we're talking about bi-level uh, lighting, uh, heat recovery systems, okay, and heat recovering systems. For storm water, the, uh, the upper roof will have, it will have detention. Um, what we're doing is we will have a, um, a blue roof, and by doing that, we're sitting them on pavers, on white pavers. So the white pavers are great for repelling um, the sun, and the part below the pavers are, will, will retain the, the rainwater and slowly let it back into the system. In addition to that, on both sides of our project, we have bioswells, um, and we've always had those in there. On the fifth floor, we are proposing a partial green roof, and the rest will be a blue roof. And that is the part where 
the birthing center is, and that also is where, you know, it just makes it a nice place for people to get out there. You know, you're giving birth, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, and it's just a nice way to also, even in the winter, look out. So we're, we're proposing planting there, and um, again, a blue roof in conjunction with the green roof. And we're considering other things, but uh, we don't know what they are yet. So these things are for sure. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear actually. Um, finally, it is the borough president's policy to maximize job opportunities for Brooklynites with local businesses. If you could outline the steps that would be taken to ensure the inclusion of minority and women-owned business enterprises and local business enterprises in the process of construction. Sure. And we understand the imperative of creating jobs in our community. Um, first off, we're, we haven't selected a contractor yet, but we're most likely hiring one that's based in Brooklyn, and we assume that they will hire locally when they're selecting their subcontractors. When the time comes, we're also willing to consider speaking with them about using best efforts to hire minority and women-owned um, subcontractors and, and enterprises of that sort. The facility, as noted before, will be geared primarily towards women, and in the medical profession, generally in practices that have predominantly female patients, doctors as well as staff tend to be women and we're looking to hire female doctors. Also, the Brooklyn Birthing Center, which we'll be relocating to the facility, is women-owned and all their staff, I'm, I'm told, are women and there are members of diverse groups at the management level and below in that company. I thank you. And it would be great, actually, as the project would move forward if it gets all the approvals, that if we could get feedback in terms of how it's going along the way with the uh, inclusion in terms of the uh, construction aspect. Most certainly, we'll be happy to do that. Thank you. Okay, um, that is actually the end of the questions. I'm just, if there are any speakers, uh, does not appear to be any, so the hearing on this item is now closed. Uh, thank you for participating in this public hearing. The borough president will review these applications that we heard tonight and will soon submit his recommendations to the City Planning Commission. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind that the City Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on this item. This hearing is now adjourned. And I'd like to remind those who may be viewing that uh, this uh, hearing is still open to timely comments that can be submitted by email to ask eric at brooklynbp.nyc.gov. Thank you.